All right, eighth graders, this is going to review all of your rotation rules to get you ready for your test later this week. So let's talk about the rule for 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. Okay, 90 degrees clockwise. I just want to remind you, clockwise, clocks go this way. If you're like at 12 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3, that's the way the clock goes. So 90 degrees clockwise. For 90 degrees, I always do, this is just what I happen to do. If it's a 90 degree rotation, I do first reverse arrow, change the sign. Miss Pearson gave me that little trick several years ago and it just works for me. So if I have a 90 degree clockwise, what I do is I first reverse the order that I write my X and Y coordinates. So I change X, Y to Y, X. Then arrow, change the sign. So on top of this one, I do an arrow going clockwise and it tells me that's what I change the sign of. So what are the coordinates of 4 comma negative 2 after it's rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin? So if I have 4 comma negative 2, I would take and I would apply my rule, x, y becomes y comma negative x. And in practice, what I do is I just say to myself, okay, first reverse. So that's all I do. I just reverse the order. Then I always do arrow clockwise, change the sign. So I know it's negative 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know it becomes negative 2, negative 4. And it's 90 degrees clockwise. So I just want to show you if I, from the origin, I draw a straight line from the origin to this point, and then I draw a straight line from the origin to the image. That makes a 90 degree angle. We're rotating this, we're spinning this point in a clockwise direction 90 degrees. So we're sweeping out a 90 degree angle to move from here to here. So it's not like this rule like we blindly follow. We take a look after we graph our points and we say, okay, if I took this and spun it about the origin 90 degrees clockwise, do I really sweep out a 90 degree angle? And I sure do. All right, let's talk about the rule for rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise. So if I'm going 90 degrees counterclockwise, that's counterclockwise. And I always, anytime I'm talking about 90 degrees, I always first reverse and then arrow, change the sign. I used to really, to tell you the truth, struggle. Um, this is not an easy topic for me, and so I used to struggle remembering, like, how do I how do I know the 90 degrees counterclockwise? Yes, I can draw it out after the fact, such as, such as that. But as soon as Miss Pearson said to me, what are you talking about? If you're doing a 90 degree rotation, you first reverse, then you put an arrow up above, now going counterclockwise, and that's the one you change the sign of. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. She's like, absolutely not. And so it's just interesting. We work with people for years, and then they give us their little tricks and mm, make such a difference. So first reverse, x, y becomes y, x, and then counterclockwise, going this way, arrow, change the sign. So let's go ahead and what are the coordinates of 4, negative 2 after it's rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. Okay, so 4, negative 2. Now I'm going counterclockwise, so I know it's going to end up up here in quadrant one. So if it doesn't end up where I'm guessing it will, I know I've made a mistake. But if I take it and I do my four comma negative two, and I first reverse, negative two comma four, then I'd put my arrow counterclockwise, change the sign. So I know it's going to be two, four.
that will be the image. And again, what I want to do is make sure if I draw a nice straight line from the origin to my original point, a nice straight line, although it's not going to be perfect because I don't have a straight edge in front of me. If I did draw a beautiful straight line to my image, you're going to see I really do sweep out a 90 degree angle. That's the whole point. I take this original point, I pivot around the origin, turning it 90 degrees counterclockwise. It's going to end up right up there. All right, let's talk about 180. Let's talk about rotating 180 degrees about the origin. So for 180 degrees, x, y stays in the same order. You just change the sign of each, change the sign of x, change the sign of y. So what are the coordinates of 4 comma negative 2 after it's rotated 180 degrees about the origin? So 4 negative 2, I'm going to plot my 4 negative 2. Now I'm going to go 180 degrees about the origin. So 4 negative 2. becomes negative 4, positive 2. You just change the sign of each. They stay in the same order. You just change the sign of each. So negative 4, comma 2. That would be the image. And really, now I better sweep out 180 degrees. So if I take my line from here to here, and I take my line from here to here, I would pivot at about the origin, and now I'm sweeping out 180 degrees. That's what 180 degrees looks like. It forms a beautiful straight line. So you're going about the origin 180 degrees. I hope that helps. I think I can do translations right on this same video. Let's talk about translations. A translation that shifts x, y, to x minus 2, y plus 1. Let's talk about what that means. So translations are just slides. So if we have x, y, and it shifts it to x minus 2, y plus 1, that means x minus 2 means move 2 units left. That's what the minus 2, 2 units left. And y plus 1 means 1 unit up. So it's important that you realize that's what that means. What is the image of 4 comma negative 2 under the translation that takes x, y to x minus 2, y plus 1? So 4 negative 2, 4 negative 2, and I'm going to shift it 2 left and 1 up. So I'm going to shift it 2 left and 1 up. 2 left, and 1 up. That's what I'm doing. So 4, negative 2 under that translation becomes 2, negative 1. Okay? And I, I'll show you. So that's visually how that happens. But if we take a look here, if we take our x, y, and we have to do x minus 2, y plus 1, if I take 4 comma negative 2, the x you need to subtract 2. So if I take 4 and subtract off 2, if I do 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2 is 2. And then y plus 1, if I take my y's, I should have left more space, sorry, and I do negative 2 plus 1. It's ugly. I want to leave more space. Sorry about this. So here, if I'm down here and I say, okay, I start at 4 comma negative 2. This tells me take your original x and subtract 2. So I take my original x of 4 and I subtract 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And then I take my original y. And it says to add 1. So I take my original y of negative 2 and I add 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So that would be how, without a graph, you could 
just apply the rule. I personally like to draw everything out on a graph. I find that that helps me. All right, let's talk about one more. Let's talk about this. Translation that shifts x, y to x plus 2, y minus 1. What does that mean? Well, if it's x plus 2, it means I'll move 2 units right. And y minus 1 says and 1 unit down. So let's take a look at just one more example here. So what is the image of 4 comma negative 2? after we go from xy to x plus 2y minus 1, after we shift 2 units to the right and 1 unit down. So I start with 4, negative 2. And I'm going to shift 2 units to the right, 1 unit down. So I have to go 2 units to the right and 1 unit down. And I'll end here at 6, comma, negative 3. I want to move my labeling here so I can, um, sorry about that, so that I can actually show you the shift. So I started at 4, negative 2. I went 2 right, and I went 1 down. 2 right, 1 down. And I could do that just using my rule, just using my x, y goes to x plus 2, y minus 1. So I could start off with my 4, negative 2. I know I have to add 2 to my x, so to my x I could add 2. I can do 4 plus 2. What's 4 plus 2? 6. And then if I start at minus 2, and I have to subtract 1, Minus 2, minus 1 more is minus 3. So that's how you can also get to your final answer, just using the rule. All right, I hope that helps. That's just a quick review on rotations and translations. Good luck on your test this week.